four council members here. Instead of what we're going to do. Well, I need to nominate and appoint someone to preside over the meeting. Our mayor is absent. That person, though, obviously will still retain their right to vote and act as a council member. <coughs> a matter of calling for motion. I nominate Tony Ward to be the active mayor for this meeting. I second the nomination. You care to call for the vote? Y'all would like to vote on that motion? Can I? I assume I abstain. You're fine. Okay. That's that's the majority of the quorum. So there you go. Okay, I will call this meeting the regular uh, meeting for the month of September 2018 to order. Um, let's go. Uh, let me update Sid real quick. So so. How do we look back? Uh, George is in the hospital. Okay. He's had an emergency appendectomy. Okay. He had planned was to be here, but when they got in there, it had ruptured and was twisted and some stuff got in behind his colon. So Mr. Chin will be out of commission for several days. Sounds like it. he may be in, Kathy told me that he may be in the hospital for three or four days and somebody was telling me he's supposed to leave for Africa when? Fourth. So that's, that's kind of pushing the envelope in my opinion, but you know, uh, wish, him, wish him well. So uh, let's open our meeting with prayer please. Our gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come to you this evening in prayer. We thank you for all the gifts and the blessings you have bestowed upon each one of us. We thank you for the country that we live in and the freedoms that we enjoy. Dear Father, we pray and thank you for this city of Hartford that we're here, that, dear Father, this township that we live in, that, dear Father, that we realize that there are issues that we have at hand and in the forefront that, dear Father, requires quite a bit of conversation and discussion and to try to make our city a better community to live in. Sometimes these decisions are not easy. Sometimes they're at uh, great uh, anguish at some of the decisions we have to make. But, dear Father, we pray two things. One is that we do your will and that we keep your children, our residents, at the forefront of all decisions. Dear Father, we pray a special prayer at this time that you'll be with George Chen, that he has just come out of surgery, that you give him, uh, him the, uh, your healing hand upon him to a speedy recovery. Dear Father, we pray that everything went well, that there is no residual side effects from it, and that we know that he has a trip planned for next week, that uh, if that opportunity arises and his health allows, please uh, give him that opportunity to make that travel. Watch over us, God lead and direct us, and, and give us the wisdom to make the decisions this evening that uh, we need to make. This we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I'm assuming you're visiting? Yep, just visiting. Just visiting? Yes. Yeah. All right, has everybody had the opportunity to review all our minutes? We've had, um, I think, just one. And, matter of fact, I'll tell you something i got to do. It's hot in here. Or a little on the warm side. Thank you, sir. I was absent from the August 23rd meeting, but I heard that Mr. Nance had a groundhog issue. Does anyone know whatever happened with that? I say it's still there. I know George uh, contacted some division, not sure which one, and they gave him some advice. I do know he went out there and talked with the residents, and it was as it was presented here in the meeting. So really, was that bad? I mean, it was bad. It is bad. Are we trying to, as a city, are we trying to do anything on our behalf to try to help? Well, uh, he called to get recommendations what to do, and then he went back and it told them what those recommendations were. We have two um, people in the county, I forgot what they're called, but... Like pest control? Are they groundhog wranglers? Yeah, but they're they're not appointed, but they are the people that are, that they go to. There's a guy at Center Town, I think yeah. Bradshaw is his name. Mm -hmm. We got skunks under our building, and he come and got them. Man, I, I heard that it was pretty bad how he described it. So I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Is there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Do I hear a motion to accept minutes as presented? Make the motion. No second. All in favor? 
All right. Ms. Ward, what have you got for us? Um, we've got an amended motion or amended ordinance in here. I think we'll hit up here in a moment, but that's all I have. All right. Okay. All right. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at the financials? Have we got any money? <laughs> On these financials, Lisa, I'm just curious, is this after the new ordinance for the water rates and everything went yes. into effect? Yes. So the first yes. building has already gone out with the new rates? Yes, and you'll see they will see that reflected on that statement. That's what you see that positive number. Not here on this? No, on your financial statement for the water. Oh, okay. Okay. So how much has that been us and how much is the difference? Well it's like a cost of twelve. That's hundred and forty four a year if we have it there. So you went from a negative six thousand a month to a positive? So we went from a negative six to a positive twelve. A, yes, but there's more than one variable that also is going on here. But there is the, the main one. Right. So we're looking if that was just it, just that one, that variance right there is about two sixteen a year, roughly two hundred. That's pretty positive considering the financial situation the city's been in the last several years on what. Anybody having comments in regard to the financials? We're still looking over. Matter of fact, it's $18,300 different. Financially, uh, it seemed like we've done a little better, not had to borrow so much money like we normally have to get for tax time. Kind of. Kind of. Because we're uh, using occupational tax. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I understand that, but. And that, and they are set up as a loan, but we will have to do that on Monday. I understand, but probably. but my point being is, it hasn't been quite as drastic yeah. as years past. Right. Right. Well, and the mayor would like to he voiced his concern that he would like to start very quickly trying to pay back some of the occupational taxes. We well, once the taxes come in, I mean, and we'll we're going to discuss we can discuss that in a little bit. <coughs> Anybody got any questions or updates on the financials or concerns? Everybody saw the, the comparative analysis on the water income between after the water rate increase. It's pretty, that was a pleasant outcome. Yeah, I, I was glad that uh, my water rate went down. Your water rate went down? My water bill went down. Next month, would we go on record to send part of my water bill to Mr. Scott? <laughs> That or can I just send Chase to your house for a while? <laughs> I, don't know. I think ours only went up about five or six on here. What, which one? The, on the business license. Mm -hmm. It says the balance is uh, 8000 compared to uh, 3000 
Are you looking from one, from one month to the next? What page is that, Jerry? It's on uh, page uh, one and five under general fund income. So and it, and the, the current period and the compared period, mm -hmm. which was a prior. Uh, uh, you know, why did the business license that we ain't increase that many businesses here? Okay, uh, what you're actually comparing is not actual businesses that people that have paid and the timing of such. So we've done a, a much better of a job of collecting our business Correct. licenses this year. Correct, and in fact, we're actually uh, getting phone calls and. Uh, she's one thing she does every week is she's also looking at the newspaper every single Who's week. Who's doing this? Okay, because right. she's the one that does the business license. And but there is part of it is just the timing of when the people choose to pay. If they want to pay for the license early or if they're going to pay on time or late. So when you're comparing it from one year to the next, because you're actually comparing this from uh, August 18 to August 19, so. You yourself as a business owner, and you may not have paid yours in August last year, but you may have been this year. So it really doesn't have anything to do as far as we have more businesses or less businesses. It's when they pay. But in I thought you didn't have much choice when to pay. They are due. Oh, they're due in June, July. Yeah, I mean, July. Mine's already paid. Yeah. I'm sure yours is too. Yeah. I, pay when I, do, I do know it. that she has a stack of uh, second notices that's already went out to those that haven't paid. And we are also, the other thing that we're doing is we are watching uh, individuals as they're paying. They're, they're actually coming in and paying their water bill. If they have a business, we're communicating that immediately and ask a pay, hey, have they paid? So it's, we're very much on top of making sure because just like you if you come in and pay your water bill that's a prime opportunity for me to say okay you have a paid your business license well, my water bill isn't paid well you need to call me because I, right. <laughs> I've either lost it or forgot it right. um, I would say that we probably need to I don't know how we can do it without costing us more money than what revenue we get off of it the golf cart permits I see a lot of people riding around town and I'll be first person to admit I have a gator that I've driven on the city streets and I bought one last year but I forgot all about it so, you know, I think people are operating these, these, I mean, we pass the ordinances, we allow these type of devices to be on the city streets, mm -hmm. but we do require to be permitted, and I'll be the first person to admit that I forgot to purchase one. So, how they run? Well, they run uh, September to September, July to July? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but what we can do is we can look at our list that is licensed now uh, and, or has expired, and make sure that they have. I would, can... if it's not very much trouble, I would, can we just send those out for renewals and I, I, I forgot I forgot all about it to be honest with you okay yeah, I'm not familiar with that ordinance but are they can they ride on any street in no. Hartford no they're not supposed to ride on Clay Street 69 231 except like where I live you've got Smith Street and Gillespie that goes to the hospital now they can come on Clay Street to get to Gillespie, but they're not to travel Clay Street, which is 1543. Which is State, State Highway. Highway. Yeah. We city cannot, streets. They can, city streets only. And then like if they're crossing 231, <clears throat> it's to cross diagonal across 231. Yeah. So what I'll do when I, if I come down to go down to the building or something, I do all the back roads and do everything I possibly can. And then I come down over here by the stoplight and then I cross straight over to go across 231. I don't try and I try to do everything I can to keep off the, the major thoroughfares. Yeah. But I think, I, you know, I think it's, a lack of better terms, it's just ignorance most of us forgot, you know, or don't realize or don't remember or whatever the case may be. Any other questions about our finances? You know, it's the only thing I thought we hadn't doubled in businesses. <laughs> None that I've seen. Been a been nice thought. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion that we accept the financial statement. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. No old business? Mm -hmm. No old business? Mm -hmm.
Not really. He told me he was going to do his talk about something what, but he was going to do that down in application and just kind of update you where we're uh, Some things have been brought to our attention, uh, and I'll ask Tara if she knows any more about it to, to elaborate on. Um, ethics board um, it is a, a committee that will evaluate actions and activities by this body or any subcommittees that are created I'm assuming to make sure that there's been no violations as far as uh, ethical actions are concerned um, you have an ordinance an ethics ordinance and essentially it calls for a panel of three people I believe to be appointed to that board similar to any other board commission whatnot that you have in the city I think I think that George was just looking to try and come up with some names and nominations. He was. I did. I did throw out to the name this morning, Dean Gray, to jo, uh, to George. Uh, that would be one name that I could throw out to him. Uh, finding somebody to sit on these boards will not be easy. It's a uh, non-compensating committee that will evaluate uh, any improprieties. I guess that they feel like that's taking place. Is that right, Tara? There are a variety of things that can be certain. So I would encourage if you've got any ideas and names to uh, to make sure that City Hall or George at least gets those. The next thing we have on our agenda is amend the abandoned urban property ordinance 2018-07. Is, is that in our packet or is that individual? Yeah, it's in the packet. It's in right after the end of the financial statement. <coughs> I'll elaborate a little bit on that <coughs> if you'd like. Um, we had this ordinance that had been passed by the council back in 2015 in accordance with the statute at the time and a model ordinance that had been passed around in the various cities. Uh, shortly thereafter, in another year or two years after that, uh, I guess whoever originally sponsored the legislation for this particular statute that authorized this ordinance realized that there were some constitutional limitations that we had to adhere to, so this is essentially going back and correcting that within those limitations. Okay. Uh. We just need to read the first portion of it. Yeah, be a, you'll need a first reading today. Jerry, do you care to read the first portion of it? An ordinance to amend the abandoned urban property and florium tax rate set out in ordinance 2015-01 to uh, 0.75 cents per $100 assessed value. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> our next thing that we need to look at is our current 2018 Avalorian Tax Ordinance 2018-08. And it needs to be the one that's not in your packet. The one that's not in our packet? <laughs> not in this type of the one of those loose ones. Is this the first reading? Yes. Okay. Mr. Lackens? Yes. You should read. It's on your second one. Uh, actually, the, the pretty, top. The top, very top. In ordinance living, living add Valorum tax for general municipal purposes for the fiscal year of January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2018, on all taxes property within the taxing jurisdiction of the City of Hartford on each one hundred dollars, one hundred dollars of fiscal year 2018, assessed value as followed on real estate, real property, 5.509 cents, tangible and personal property, 0.48 cents, including real and personal property of public service companies. Correct me if I'm wrong. This We are actually accepting the compensating rate. I know we'll go on record saying because our tax base had increased in the city of Hartford and taken the compensating <coughs> rate, the overall tax bills have been lowered because compensating rate makes sure that we get the same amount of tax dollars this year as we did last year. So if we're going to get the same gross number of dollars on taxes, 
and our tax base went up, the effective rate that are going to be charged on, I think all these are probably going to be less than what our rates were last year. What was last year? Uh, 0.55. So we actually went down cent. uh, 0.41 cents mm -hmm. taxes on that. So, uh, all we have to do is have the reading on this one, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I do have a question because I don't see this on the agenda. City of Hartford Section 3 plan, what is this? Uh, the that's these are the pack pieces that are on the outside of your packet. They were sent to us from Bright Alley for CBG requirements. Uh, a couple of them, actually, there's one resolution and two of the others that need motions only. Resolution is uh, 1802 Section Three Plan. Okay, so we just need to read this. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. It's, it's a resolution. Sid, do you care to read it? Sure. Resolution establishing a Section 3 plan for the City of Hartford, Kentucky. Whereas during the implementation of the CDBG program, Title I of the Housing Community Development Act of 1974 requires that a community, to the, great extent, to the greatest extent feasible, utilize low-income persons within the community and increase opportunities for training and employment of lower residents of the city and... Whereas the Commonwealth of Kentucky Department of, for Local Government has awarded community development block grant funds to the City of Harper to, to implement their CDBG project. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the, city of, by the Hartford City Council that the City of Hartford Section 3 plan is hereby adopted and that this plan be enacted and take effect immediately upon adoption of this resolution. Approved this 27th day of September 2018. Do we have to actually have a vote? Yeah. Make, make a motion. Make second. a motion that we accept this. I second. And act this resolution. All in favor? So resolved. I'm not, I'm not sure on the, the order. The other two pieces, uh, the top of one is the affirmative action plan, and the other is the carpet section three plan. It's not exactly framed as such. But I don't think, uh, I think if you vote on those, that'll probably be more than sufficient. So, if so we don't have to really to take any action. Well, I would, I would go ahead that, because it's apparently these are prepared. So, Do we have to read the entire thing? On, on that? No, I think that basically you can take, make a vote to accept this affirmative action plan for the city since it's, it's already drafted and summarized. Make a motion that we accept this affirmation and action plan. Second. All in favor? Okay. And then on section three plan. Uh, I presume this is the same thing. It, I'm, I'm looking for exact language here, but I guess this is what they sent over. But yes, the same same issue. This appears to be another affirmative action plan. Is that? Is there's two of them. Uh, yes, because there's also there is paperwork that they're asking for percent of uh, female. Diversity Male, events? Okay. Yes, and uh, there is uh, three sets of worksheets that, Kat, that Patty's working on to break out the population, you know, by those designations. Okay. okay, so we don't need to do anything on this? Well, I would vote on that one, too. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we accept the City of Hartford Section 3 plan. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, the next thing Mr. Uh, Chen has on the agenda is for the bank lot wall update. Um, I had to talk to uh, Ray Smith, who was with Wilkerson Plastering today, about another project that I'm talking to him about for the city, for the uh, hospital, and to get an update. The color has been picked. I think it's called natural. Is it natural white? Is that what it's called? It's not white white, but it's kind of an off white. It's already been uh, ordered. As a matter of fact, it's in and. Uh, he had a full crew down there, about nine people down there working on the wall today. They had the KU show up. They've had to tear the corner, the back column down a little bit because there wasn't enough clearance about the wire. Uh, Mr. Chen, myself, Tara, met down there one day with KU uh, about options on, uh, on the power. <laughs> they wanted, I, I got a quote, it, it's crazy, $33,000 to move a power line, then they was going to have to move Mr. Uh, uh, Whitting Hills power to the building it was going to be probably grand total of five or six thousand dollars. I think we all looked at it and <laughs> kind of looked at it and that's all we did was look at it. It's a nice thought to move all that but that just seemed a little excessive uh, unless anybody disagreed. 
Uh, just to get a poll moved, it takes a act of Congress. That, that was it. They took forever to get the quote back, and and uh, the next thing we knew that they were already starting on the wall, and I mean, somewhere some line, along the line, somebody's going to do something about that pole because it kind of lays like this, doesn't it, Tara? Mm -hmm. It's almost on the wall. So uh, if you look at it, uh, I will tell you that they had three different engine, two or three different engineers looked at it. The plan was to dig a footer, and none of this decision, um, and I reckon Wilkerson's had to make this decision independently. I'm sure they corresponded with the mayor on this. Uh, to dig a footer, pour a footer, lay concrete block up eight feet, and then go up and drive it. When they dug a pit, an inspection pit, they dug into it and found out that there was wire, and there was block, and there was brick, and there was... When they tore the old Citizens Bank building down, rather than going in there and compacting it and they just took a lot of the stuff and just threw it in the hole. It would not support a footer. And afraid if they dug the footer down next to that building, it would cause the basement wall of the Capers building to topple. Wow. So he said, met with the engineers and the engineers made the decision that it would be better to put the styrofoam on the wall all the way up, put to drive it, and it will actually be less expensive than what the original quote was for the footer and that. And there will probably be enough money left over to do a sidewalk next to it, which will be a curb abutment, so cars can't go up and hit the building. Is that going to preserve the wall? Because at the very top it is starting to lean they're, up. Uh, they're, uh, he told me that they were going to do everything they can to straighten everything up and put cap on it. But the wall, once they got to dig in the pit, that all that was in such bad shape they could not dig it. If they dug a footer big enough to carry that eight-foot block wall, they were going to endanger the basement and the wall of the entire building. And uh, and I told, you know, I learned about that maybe a week or two ago, and he, uh, I have correspondence with the mayor, so hopefully the mayor, I haven't had a chance to talk to the mayor about that, but the mayor, him and the mayor were supposed to have all that correspondence, but that's what they came up with, that that was going to be the only really option to do go that route. Um, the way he talked, Maybe one day next week they might be starting putting the top coat finish on top of it. So, anybody got any questions on that? Um, I'm just curious. What are we had on the sidewalk? I know, I know that Mr. Likens and I were abstained at the last meeting, but have we? Where are we at on that? I mean, we rebid it. We've done anything on it? No. I saw guys out there talking. Yeah, yeah. but there's, but we haven't. I mean, they just walked up down there. And we haven't published anything that we're accepting bids yet. In passing the other day, when I was talking to George, he mentioned though that they're that the engineers re, we re uh, redone that section that you all approved. I think to open that up to open up for bids, yeah. but we haven't got to that okay. to the step to actually to be ready to publish it. So that's something we're going to be getting close. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I got a telephone call. A couple days ago, three days ago, from Adam Allen, asphalt, Allen asphalt sealing. His season season is about over, where he can uh, seal stuff. He's got quite a bit of seller left over, and he said that he would like to get rid of it. He said he would cut the city a good deal, um, and I don't know what a good deal is compared to what last year's prices or last previous year's prices be. And he gave me three the other day, and I told him I'd present it. I, I would encourage the idea that we don't have a mayor here and two of our council members here. I don't know that we'd feel comfortable taking action one way or the other on this without more involvement. Uh, he talked about the cemetery. Uh, the cemetery, we have resurfaced the cemetery with a lot of blacktop. I drove through it yesterday. Most of it looks pretty good. If you'll top, start at the top of the hill where you come around where we hit it, ditch that we put riprap, that has got some cracks in it. I mean, it, because it's by virtue where it's at. There's a tree there, and it looks like maybe a little bit, of, and there's a fine line that runs from me to at least dust it, if not further, where a bunch of, I mean, wide cracks is open up in it. And then there's one soft spot at the top. He thinks that re uh, uh, sealing it will, it will help, uh, uh, you know, preserve, preserve it. He said there's about a thousand feet of cracks all over the whole cemetery, and uh, he said that he would uh, blow and sweep the drive, um, fill approximately a thousand feet of cracks and, and hot pour crack filler, and then he would put uh, two coats of sealer with three pounds of sand per gallon with rubber 
add to allow, to allow for wear. He gave a quote of $8,000 to do the entire cemetery on that. Um, the courthouse square, which we did, what, three or four years ago, two years ago, something like that. He gave a quote of $6,000 on. And then he talked about restriping Arn Mountain Road, putting stops on the stop signs and no passing on the pavement, which for those of us who've driven around town and seen that parted on the streets, I thought that was a probably not the best wise, wise use of money. He quoted 5000 The only thing that I can say about Arm Mountain Road, because Tara and I drive it every day, Sid drives it every day, is the hill right there by the cemetery. If she's going out and I'm coming in, invariably we're both on, a, on, on, on one other side. That probably does need to be striped, at least over that hill, and at least a sign put up. And then the, once you top that hill, on the other side of the hill on the right at the bottom of the cemetery, there is a concrete head wall that probably needs to have some type of yellow or some type of abutment put on it because I've seen two or three vehicles go off the road and head to that, of which one was my niece. And if you hit that thing head on, you're going to get hurt big time. Um, and our neighbor, Mrs. Uh, Ralph, Mackenzie Ralph, uh, Gail's, Gail Watt Ralph, requested both of those to be looked at. Something about the hill there on, on uh, Arm Mountain Road. Um, excuse me a minute, I've got to answer the hospital. That whole road out there at Arm Mountain is dangerous all the way through the whole thing. I drove a bus out on it for several years and there's several dangerous spots. Mm -hmm. It's not wide enough. That and it's the hills, you got the views blocked, you pull out, you just take a chance there where you pull out most times. I mean, I don't know what y'all, I, I do think that Ms. Rouse right that that concrete thing probably needs to be painted or looking at putting a, a post up in front of it uh, and a, either signs or something or striping or put a yellow mark across the hillside right there might be, but uh, I'm not real keen on spending I don't think we should take any action until uh, we I get agree. more members. I agree. Councilman here and the mayor. Um, I want to point out that the Harvest Festival was postponed for this year. Uh, that the Harvest Festival pageant is still a go. It's my understanding she has over 20 some odd participants. That is this Saturday at the community center. Uh, from 10 to 2, I think. Is that correct, Tara? Sound right? Uh, anybody who can be there, she's probably going to need some help. And I can tell you that a good portion of my family's not going to be there because they're leaving for Waco, Texas, Waco, Texas on Saturday morning. Is that right? They tell me. So, uh, uh, Hannah Blair Ward is doing it. Uh, she is my niece. Yeah, but, uh, uh, we went, she already had several enrollees at that time, so uh, and many people can be there. I would encourage to do what there. I, I just I remembered I need to tell you something about getting a key. <coughs> oh, okay. So uh, she may need some help. I'm going to try to come up and do what I can, uh, but I'm not a pageant person. I might be more hindrance than I am help. So, said you a pageant person? No. Um, I have an obligation for Saturday. I would help. Okay. The church obligation. Uh, I was the only participant in the man's pageant one time, and I came in second. You came in second? <laughs> well, Jerry, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? How many was entered into that? He said he's the only participant. Only participant. No, no, and he no, came in second. I didn't hear that part. It's kind of coming in third in a two-man race, right? Yeah. Uh, the Christmas festival is something that the merchants has worked on, uh, apparently for a good while, and it's scheduled for November 17th. Um, they've already got a few vendors signed up for it. They've already got some events signed to work with it. Uh, we've been trying to do some education that that maybe the city might need to know a little further in advance than what notice we had gotten this year. But, you know, I give them kudos that they're making an effort to, to make a nice festival this year. 
But I'll tell you something that the city that they could use. There are going to be some some expenditures that needs to be made, and um, um, for lack of better terms, do we need to appropriate, make some arrangements to appropriate some funds to to do that? Is a question I guess I'm asking. You sit there on that committee. Were you there? You weren't there the night. You weren't able to make it to the meeting. Or were you there that night? I don't know. <coughs> the, 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 the one Kathy called the meeting. No, the last one, Tuesday. No. She wasn't there. Okay. So that's my question. Is it? Um, we took money out of the Save the Theater. Is that times past? Is what we've done at Harvest Theater? Yeah, actually. Would um, EDC sets aside a certain amount? EDC. It's what has happened in the last two years. Uh, do, do we still have the, the offer of the funds from tourism? Could it go toward? Uh, that money was earmarked specifically for Andy Brasher. We would have to go back to tourism to ask that. The Commonwealth Community Bank okay. committed a hundred dollars. They okayed the because I took the check back in and asked would they allow us to use it for the Christmas. I mean, I might suggest that you you get with them and find out kind of what they have in plan and, and expense wise. They might have a better idea. There is a mood. There is a meeting scheduled for Tuesday. Is that correct? Oh, Tuesday at five thirty. Well, there's an EDC meeting also scheduled for Tuesday. Is that correct? I'll be out of town. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess now let's put you on notice. There may be a request for some dollar figures to help s to support this because there is going to be probably going to have to have the need for some city employees to be here to do certain things. Maybe rent porta potties uh, to help cover maybe. Some minor expenses, maybe with uh, a band or two. I don't know. I say minor. I don't know. I, I have no idea what the dollar figure is going to be. Uh, was there any dollar figure thrown out the other night? You were there. Uh, they, they said that King's Highway was free. I don't know. We will try to get a more concrete. I know. We don't know as much. Unfortunately, the person who's kind of taking the lead on this was not available for that meeting Tuesday night. So hopefully, they'll be coming for this coming Tuesday night. Well, in the past, haven't we committed money for the Harvest Festival? Like $3,000? Something like that. Yeah, I think so. And I don't see why the... We couldn't entertain something like that before or now. And then make that decision after you determine what their needs are. Fair enough. Because you, you would still have time to give them funds. Okay. Tuesday night limited. we should, huh? This isn't like a two-day festival, right? It's limited no, hours. No, it's it's a one-day festival. It's a one-day festival. Um, has anybody got anything else that they want to bring up before? Okay. Uh, I would like to. Uh, you know, when I mentioned Harvest Festival and that it was postponed this year, you know, on the face page, I'm not on Facebook, but my wife is, and I quite frequently get on her face page, Facebook page to see what's going on. There was a lot of negative comments made about that. There's been a lot of negative comments made about the city of Hartford. I would like to read something. Uh, I've given a lot of thought to this. Tara and I have had some discussion about it. And I would like to read this, and, and then if uh, actually if O.C. Monitor would like a copy of it, I don't have a problem sharing it with them. There have been a lot of rumors, insin insinuations, and gossip surrounding the city of Hartford, and I feel it's necessary to address them openly and in a sincere manner. For some time, especially over the last few months, there have been a lot of negativity in our community among city employees and on social media regarding Hartford and its leadership. Constructive criticism discussion is important and can lead to wonderful developments, but constant complaints and accusations do nothing but keep this city from moving forward and discourage hardworking and civic-minded people from wanting to get involved. I am making this statement not only as a city, Hartford City Council member, but also as a resident. I love Hartford. I built a business here. I built a home here, and I've raised my family here. I continue to invest in this city and want to see it grow. No one serves on a city council for glory or money. City council members are paid $150 a month and often spend hours upon hours over the course of several meetings each month to try, lead, to try and lead, direct, and make decisions that benefit both workers, businesses, and residents. Tough decisions are often made, and it's a, th and it's a thankless job. But we serve because we love this town and the people we, 
and the people who live and work here. I know people are upset over the sudden cancellation of the 2018 Harvest Festival. I know workers are upset about potential changes to management structures and policies. I know residents are upset over water rate increases and high sewer bills. But not a single one of these decisions or any other decisions the council has had to make or made, who has had to make or are made with any ill will or spite, but simply out of necessity. The world is more expensive than it used to be. Making quality water and distributing it to the homes requires chemicals, new equipment, and improvements to our water system. Sewage used to be dumped in lagoons and now must be treated. Hartford's aging population allows for homestead exemptions to decrease property tax revenues. Something must be done to address these increasing costs and lost revenues so that our city can continue to exist. I realize some people think it's foolish for the city to invest in economic development when other account balances are low, but without growth, our city will never earn the tax base and income it needs to thrive. Most importantly, never are these decisions made without full disclosure and vote from the council. It is very easy to point fingers and blame and criticize. It is much harder to become informed and actively participate in finding a solution. But I encourage every single Hartford resident to do just that. If you have questions, call me. I will answer all inquiries honestly and as openly as allow allows. Instead of listening to gossip or making assumptions, be positive and work with us to understand the truth and brainstorm ideas. Come to a meeting. Call me or the mayor or any other council member. We're the ones who are still here trying to do the best we can. And if you disagree with our decision, decisions, at least you will understand why and see that each issue is discussed and prayed over and voted on by the people who genuinely care. We may not always make the best decision or even always agree, but I can honestly say that everyone who currently sits on this council will try to do what, what they feel is right. Hartford needs positivity and a community that works together instead of tearing each other down. I may not always serve on city council, but I will always love this city. Please do not let false accusations and negativity destroy this town. Work with us, support each of us, and pray for Hartford. Well said. Thank you all for indulging me. Any other discussion before we call for a adjournment? Any? I just want to <clears throat> give you all this. Oh, okay. It's, it, it's not on the agenda, but it's Viola. When they come in and did our comparing they were basically comparing what the city has to offer and what they have to offer i just want to give to y'all for a communication reason so i only made one copy okay look at the copies we made so curious as you looked over it scared to death liked it didn't like it uh, to be honest with you it could say it was going to pay me hundred thousand a year and it wouldn't change my decision basically the way i feel i think i've told everybody how i feel about hartford and yeah. working here and the big pay cut I took to come here to be a part of Hartford, you know. But I just wanted to give that. That way, y'all kind of have an idea of what they said in the meeting. And, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people are against it, but, you know, a few of them are, they like what it says. But Well, I think there's one important thing we need to point out, and I, and I said it as I read this. We have a responsibility to run the city as efficient as possible. Our goal is not to scare any employee, but we would be doing the city of Hartford and our own employees an injustice if we don't look at every option that's out there for us. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, uh, but I just want to give that, that way you know what they kind of talked about. And that's basically all it was, and I had them send it to our email. So I can print off more if y'all don't, you know. Or we can copy it in there. copy it in there or whatever, so. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Oh, we I, don't I, I enjoy coming every too, meeting. So. It and helps I, the communication a lot. I think. I want to print this one. It. I didn't change the size. And okay. <laughs> well, you mean and you I, didn't print it for us old people? I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to show you that. So okay. Just what they have to offer and compared to us. So. Okay. You know, and, and there's one other thing that that's come to my attention. I would like to bring up, and all I'm asking is for y'all to think about this. You know, the Harvest Festival, the Christmas Festival. Um, other events that we have in City of Hartford, uh, even from the Economic Development Council, uh, there are grants that are available. We don't have a go-to person in this city that could help take the lead on doing certain things, that they would be the primary person to contact if there's some questions to be asked along, about, along, along this line, some of this information stuff that we've got. 
and these are just two or three things that I thought of off the top of my head. Give some thought. Is there merit to looking and seeing if it's either a PRN, part-time job, uh, talking about one of our current employees that may have the skill sets that could help do that? You know, um, too many cooks spoil the broth. Uh, if we can have one person that could be brought up to date and educated and, and empowered to help take some guidance and some direction and to help give some guidance and direction on this, it may help us be a little bit more of a, somewhat of a liaison to the community and to our, to our county and our city. Um, obviously, I'm not asking for a decision tonight, but I think that as we've talked about, you know, whether it be the Harvest Festival or the Christmas Festival or what other ever events we may have, uh, I don't know all. I don't know it all. You don't know it all. She don't know it all. But, you know, if we can have one person that's committed and dedicated to that, they can help gather that information and help distribute it. Because if nothing else, I can say, hey, you need to pick up telephone call so-and-so. Right now, I don't know who you call. I don't. Talking like a city manager or city coordinator? Well, it could be a city manager. It could be a city coordinator. If we're not quite ready for that, it could be just a person to help facilitate these other things I just mentioned. I do think somewhere down the road that the city of Hartford needs to think about a city manager, city coordinator, city superintendent, whatever the terminology is. I know the state statute says we probably can't use a city manager, right? Well, you're not set up as a like, commissioner or manager base, but you can definitely create a position that does what you need to do. But, you know, council will come and go. Mayors will come and go. You know, if we can someday look at that, these would be people who would be here that can help keep things going. Actually, the, the discussion I was talking about might be even more preliminary and basic than that, but it could lead into something like that. I think we have a need now just to have somebody maybe a few hours a week or a few hours a month or a few hours a quarter doing certain things that we already have basic needs for now. And it could evolve to where we do need to get this other. I, I, I've been an advocate of looking at a super, city superintendent city manager, city coordinator for a good while. Uh, money dictates. But I do believe this. We can become more proficient and more efficient. The money may be already be there. I think so, too. We just got to figure out a way more economically to spend it. I'll get off my doggy pony show. Uh, anybody got anything else? I think you're right on that. I know uh, when my son was in band, I had never been to a band, didn't know anything about band. <laughs> I learned pretty quick. And then uh, they wanted to know if I'd be vice president. And I thought, I've been vice president in a lot of things, and you will never do anything. So I said, yeah, I'll be vice president. <laughs> <laughs> and then after I said that, I said, what does the vice president do? And they said, they put on the band festival. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and uh, so I put on the band festival for three years. But I had a, a list of things that who to call to get the porta potties and uh, what need to be done and go through that and it it made it a lot easier having that where if you just start out with a blank slate you, you take you the whole time to fill out what you need to do you know it's kind of like doing a job the tools make a difference if you've got the tools to do a job you'll do a better quality job more efficiently and it's the same way with people that's all we are tools in some respects. So give some thought about that. Uh, one more thing I think before I call for an adjournment is um, we are going to have to have a call meeting. Is that correct? We need to have a call meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> I know that Friday will not work. I know that Monday will not work. Okay. Well, I'm already going to be here Tuesday night. You going to be here Tuesday night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll be here Tuesday night. Yeah. There you go. I mean, we might could do it after, let's say, 6 or 6.30 or something like that because we got EDC meeting, I think. Or we could do it right before. Yeah, we could do it before. It's just to pass that one ordinance. It won't take two minutes, I don't okay. presume. Right. We just need a second reading. So we want to say 4.30? Four to five. I know. I mean, I know four thirty. What time is the, what time is the other meeting? Five thirty. I don't know. Yes, yeah, the the, per, the uh, festival. November seventeenth is at five thirty. I know that Jody always has to have later. I know David has to have. 
okay. early. That was our problem. Well, well can we make now. it five? So, you've can got we make it five or five fifteen? One shoot for five fifteen. Five fifteen. That leg is, and when there's we should be done by. Well, if that's all, if that's all, th if that's the only thing we're talking about. So five fifteen Tuesday. I mean, I think some of us may already be here for EDC. And then we'll go get done with that, and then we'll go into that, and then we'll go into the Christmas. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion. We adjourn. Second? My second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thanks for bringing that. Thank you very much.